You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have knowledge for knowledge for life. You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have knowledge for knowledge for life. You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have knowledge. Someone who is probably well known to all of us, especially to, to those of us who need a wake up in the morning and who love coffee. If you visited Third Perk, you know already who I'm talking about. This sister is not only just an entrepreneur, she is a community activist and who does her best to help out other entrepreneurs. So I want you all to please give our sister a warm round of applause as we bring our sister, Sister Juanita Darton to the stage. And I'm ready, I'm very interested in what our sister has to say because our sister is not just talking the talk, but she is expanding her enterprise into other areas. So please give her a round of applause as she brings with her her, her, her beautiful compadre. Did you release us in the name of Jesus? Fine, how you doing, sister? I'm a better Help us to understand that we need all in this community to make a difference. Lord, there are so many ills in our community. Poverty, illiteracy, Lord, there's so many isms that we face every day. But we know, oh God, as long as you sit high and you use us as your vehicle of wholeness and peace and healing and deliverance, that this world will be a better place. So what we pray right now. Hello, I am Juanita Michelle and this is my beautiful, my beautiful granddaughter Naomi. She is accompanying me today and I am so thankful that she is here. Hello, I am a lifelong resident of Dayton, Ohio and I love my city just like everyone else has and I just wanted to come to you today just to share a little bit about my story and my journey in entrepreneurship and how I try to share my uh, my mission and what I do and some of my talents with our community. So I am a graduate of Dunbar High School and I know, yay Dunbar. So um, again, I've been here all of my life graduate of Dunbar, and I've always been an entrepreneur. I started my first business when I was nine years old, where I sold vegetables out of my parents' garden. And from that point, I have done a lot of things. Uh, my first brick and mortar business opened in 2002, and it lasted for six whole months. Six months it lasted before I had to close my doors. So, that experience taught me a lot. Um, it taught me that operating a business, you can open up the doors easily. Um, it's easy to sign a lease, it's easy to get in place, but sustainability is a different topic. So when I thought about opening a coffee house, which came to mind in about 2008, when the coffee house down on Salem closed, I thought, I could open up a coffee house. And I thought about it. I didn't put a lot of energy towards it because I understood what the undertaking was for a brick and mortar space. So in 2013, January of 2013, I was on my way to the inauguration for President Obama and I put a little more action into uh, thinking about that coffee house. 
So I started praying about it to make sure that it was a good thing for me to do at the time. And after I got confirmation through prayer, I started using local resources to put a business plan together. Because this time, when I created my business, I was going to create a business that was going to have sustainability. It wasn't important for me to open up the doors and to operate, but it was important for me to show myself, my family, and my community how I could create a business and that it has sustainability. So I first went to the Small Business Development Center and I worked with a counselor by the name of Adrian Herb. And it took me about 12 months to really complete my business plan and really do all of the work that I lacked in my first brick and mortar store. So in creating a business plan for uh, a sustainable business, it took more than just the fluff. So I'm gonna give you some of the tips that I used in completing this business plan that I, I am actually implementing for Third Perk. So number one, have a dream or vision that you wanna make a reality. And then you have to think about whether or not you can afford the business. So this is a funny story. So initially, I felt like I could operate a little coffee house and I'll earn about $50,000. I could do that in the summers working at Sinclair. I could round up this money real quick. I went to my first coffee trade show and I learned that it wasn't $50,000 that I needed to operate that little coffee house. I needed about $200,000 to operate that coffee house. In fact, when I went up to the, one of the professionals, he asked me, well, how much money do you have saved? And I was like, $50,000. I got all my money. So when I said that, he said, so where are you going to get the rest of the money from? And I was like, okay. So uh, you have to have the right amount of money. So in having the right amount of money, um, you need to make sure you research and plan. You need to make sure you seek professionals that are going to help you execute this plan properly. Our cousins usually are not those professionals that you want to look for, okay? Not even in operating the business. When you have a dream, that dream is yours, and you are the only one that is responsible for, for believing in it. Um, sometimes your family and friends don't, uh, they're not vested enough. They care, but they're not invested enough to actually help you execute the way you need to. The next thing on my list, seeking individuals. And then we also wanna make sure we make a decision if you should stop or if you should move ahead. So you research and plan, you see if you have the right amount of money. Before you make a move, uh, make sure it's something that you actually want to see through. A lot of times we get into things and once we get there, you find it's not where you want to be. Well, you can make those decisions before you actually start operating and investing your money. So once you start implementing your plan, creating your plan, make sure you are seeking resources in the community that are going to help you build the correct plan. Um, I am a person who likes to do things that make me feel good. Anybody who knows me knows that I like to be happy and I like to do things that make me happy. Building that winning business plan, it tells me to use skills um, in every area. In some of the areas that I'm very skilled at, I'm a mathematics teacher. I know how to manipulate numbers, I know how to uh, set up uh, financial statements and things like that, but that's not always the fun stuff. But it was the things that I needed to do in order to make sure that I was going to be in a position to have a sustainable business. So as I was moving forward at a lack of $150,000 that I knew for sure up top that I was going to need, um, I started seeking um, I seeked advice from Citywide Development, and then I had a fundraising campaign with friends and family. Now, those of you who are interested in, fin in entrepreneurship, I charge you to first raise money on your own, 
because your money shows that you're serious. If you come to the table with your good looks and a nice tie, then usually people will want to see just a little bit more than that. You need to show some type of experience in the field or you need to have your a little bit of your own money, what you can come up with. So I did have money on my own. I did have equipment, but it wasn't enough. So I launched what I call a 200 campaign. So my goal was to contact 200 individuals to, for them to give me a gift of $50. It was not an investment. It was just a seed into the business that I had hoped to launch. I successfully raised about $5,000 with that um, effort. I got a little discouraged um, because for $50, people wanted me to do a lot for that $50 that was not an investment. So I found myself uh, just a little burnt out with that, but it still landed me $5,000 closer to my dream. Um, some things that I did to make Third Perk happen are a couple of things that I wouldn't advise another entrepreneur to do. Um, I had to exhaust credit cards, and I wouldn't suggest that to anyone because it's just not a good idea. Let's just say that. Um, but what I would do is suggest to you that you may save longer so that you can have the monies that you need. Maybe you have to put your dream off for a little while before it actually comes true. So creative financing is very important. And since that time, after, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So in 2000, 14, I actually found the space to place Third Perk. My vision of Third Perk was supposed to be on West Third Street, and that's how the name Third Perk came to be. And when I was not able to secure a space in the right Dunbar district, then, and I had fallen in love with the name Third Perk, Third Perk came, became little about the location and more about it being three experiences in one location. So Third Perk is a coffee house, it is a wine bar, and it is a local art gallery. So we support local artistry. Thank you. We support local artistry. Our space is always filled with local talent. And those artists come in, they use our space, they use our walls, they make the space beautiful, and they earn money by having their own private gallery there and that is done with a zero commission. So that is our way of supporting local artistry. So we landed at the corner of Fifth and Ludlow and that we signed a lease, that was September 2014. We signed our lease in January of 2015 and we opened our doors on June 15th of 2015. We celebrated four years in our space this past June and we are actually expanding to the Dayton Mall. I am giving myself a commercial. Hello, Dayton. <laughs> we are opening our doors at the Dayton Mall prayerfully on this Tuesday. Um, we have had some wonderful things happen in that space. We have had um, everything from empowerment, empowerment meetings. Uh, we have had poetry. We've had uh, spiritual uh, uh, worship services, we have had political fundraisers, and we have just had a doggone good time over the last four years. Um, if you've not made it to Third Perk at 46 West 5th Street, I invite you guys to come in because it is really a community hub. But getting back to some things that may be helpful for entrepreneurs that are in our space, in 2000, 2016, Montgomery County and the city of Dayton and some other sponsors put together a micro enterprise grant. That grant was to award up to $25,000 to small business enterprises. Uh, there were a couple things that made you a small business, business enterprise. Your gross earnings must be less than $75,000 um, in receipts annually. I meant that. <laughs> um, you needed to be a disadvantaged business. 
Um, I meant that too. Uh, you needed to have fewer than, I believe it was 20 employees, and we were a, we were one of the first recipients to receive the Micro Enterprise Grant in 2016. So that grant, which had little stipulations for the entrepreneur, allowed me to buy new equipment, it allowed me to purchase new supplies, it allowed me to hang on a little bit longer where the days were really dark at Third Perk at the time. Um, so I was very thankful for that grant opportunity because without it, we probably would not have been able to sustain the way we have. The second thing that um, helped us financially since we've been in business is that in 2018, we launched a Kiva campaign. So those of you who are not familiar with Kiva, it's K-I-V-A, K-I-V-A dot org. Kiva is a fun, a crowdfunding uh, site. It is for the entrepreneur, a zero interest loan. So that's like free money. And you had, and I think they lent up to $10,000. Well, we launched a Kiva campaign in the middle of last June. And in two days, we had raised all of the funds that we needed for those, um, for that campaign. We were looking for $5,000. And we gave that money. It, it wasn't even two whole days before we raised all of the money. It was, it was just incredible. Now, unfortunately, with Kiva, it's not like Kickstarter or GoFundMe where um, people who want to support you can continue to lend money. It is a loan. It is a loan to a certain amount. And then they won't allow you to continue to raise money. So it's, it was $5,000 in cut. Um, but we did that. And uh, that again helped us to purchase more equipment because as a cafe, uh, your ovens burn out and you still need more supplies. And it, it's like running a household. So any of you who are owners of homes, you know that when you have a home and you're taking care of a home, there's always something to do, okay? So that Kiva campaign allowed us to do some additional marketing, it just allows us to stay relevant, to continue to stay relevant in our community. Um, so those are our creative financing um, vehicles that we've used to be sustainable. And then we've been very creative with marketing. So marketing is very important as an entrepreneur because you have to make sure that people continue to know that you're there. So. It's hard to battle against Jesus. <laughs> so, um, with marketing, there are some things that we do to keep, continue to keep people coming into our space. Um, every Tuesday, we invite you to come out and have $2 coffee. It doesn't matter what size brew you choose. It's always $2 all day, every day on Tuesday. I said all day, every day, but just on Tuesday. <laughs> so on Tuesday, we have $2 Tuesday. Um, we have a happy hour on Thursday where um, in the evenings you can take care, take advantage of some of our fabulous cocktails. And on every um, fourth Thursday, we have spoken word. On the third Thursday, we have a Shiro event. We have we try to make it a reason for you to come in and support us, other than us just having wonderful coffee and great customer service. So, um, as I am wrapping up my small talk about um, being in business um, and trying to be a sustainable business, which I, for me, it's more important that I am sustainable, um, that I am building a legacy for my children and my children's children. Um, because as my oldest granddaughter says, when G passes, all of this is ours. <laughs> so we, I want to thank you all for um, being my customers, those of you who have come out to Third Perk. I've, I invite you to come out to Third Perk downtown 
or Third Park Express at the Dayton Mall starting on Tuesday. And um, for those people who you know who are walking the path to entrepreneurship, there are some things that you can do personally to ensure their success. Um, you can be supportive of their dream. You don't have to buy into it. You don't have to... Uh, you don't have to do a lot of things, but you don't have to be their naysayer either, okay? It's, a, it's okay for someone to have a vision, and you don't have to push them forward, but you don't have to pull them back either. Um, if you can, when you know that an entrepreneur has launched, and they are, especially if they're in a brick and mortar, you should invite them to dinner sometimes because they may not be eating. They may not have money to eat. That's a true story. Um, when you're putting your all into a brick and mortar space and they're not having tons of sales coming in, they may be hungry. You may want to go and check on that person, take them a sandwich or something. Um, number three, you may want to just visit them in the space where they're occupying because as an entrepreneur and you're operating a brick and mortar space, you're there supporting that business. So you may not be able to come to every event. Um, you may not be able to go to parties. You may be too tired to fellowship later. But what you can do is maybe stop by and give them a little support just by showing your face and just letting them know that you want to come by and say hello. And finally, um, keep them and keep me in your prayers because it is more than a notion to keep those doors open. And we don't see 125 people every day. 125 has always been our number. It has never changed. And we very little hit it. But there are some things that happen in the middle that keep us sustained. But we need to see 125 people. So if you're thinking about coffee, Monday through Saturday, stop by. Um, we have, our hours vary. So we open 7.30 Monday through Friday, so you can stop by on your way to, um, to work. And you can call ahead, we'll have your coffee waiting for you. And on Saturdays, we open at 9 o'clock. We love to serve you, and if you come in, you'll see how much we love to serve you and how much we appreciate your support. Thank you. I'm Juanita Michelle, and this Naomi Rosencrantz. And we thank you for your support. Thank you. Questions? So we have a space in our um, cafe where you can hold six to 15 people can come back and have a meeting. Um, it's not an enclosed space, but it is a space that we use freely for our customers. Um, we just ask that as you're using this meeting space that you support the business. Yes. So we're opening our doors on Tuesday, but the grand opening is actually going to be on Saturday at 10 o'clock. Yes. So we're gonna we're gonna let the new employees get used to the machines and operating, and then we'll have a big celebration on Saturday. I, I do want you to come out there on Tuesday and on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you all. You got to have it. You got to have it. You got to have it. You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have, no.